for those who will be watching live. I mean, sorry, online uh, a recording. So it was a, a, a webinar that was scheduled only what yesterday, two days ago. So I know many people were not able to put it on their calendars or um, are not available on a weekend. So we will record it. But today we have a meeting with um, a very special guest. And in this case, I really mean it, a very special guest. So um, Vladimir here, we've been working together, I don't even know for how many years now, four or five, maybe even more. It feels I think like it's, it's between three and four, something like that. Maybe, maybe it feels like forever. But what's remarkable about him is he's a serial entrepreneur. Uh, so his company keeps, his business endeavors keep evolving. Uh, when we first met, uh, the company was called Zen CD and specialized in developing sort of work of art like uh, CVs, resumes. I mean, you should see some of the things that they produced for their clients. I mean, this is literally like something you could print and put on, on your wall as a painting, not as a CV for applying for jobs. So very, very interesting type of business. But then as it often happens, the company pivoted a number of times and now they expanded into what they call Zen higher. Zen as in Buddhism, Zen, the state of you know total calm. So if you work with them, your job hunt will be <laughs> sort of painless and stressless for you. But uh, so lately they ventured into something very different uh, or perhaps not very different, but much more advanced, namely um, AI, artificial intelligence assisted services for uh, HR departments, so to speak. So the company uh, basically is trying to develop, let's call it a robot, a computer or an artificial intelligence that will watch your job interviews and will try to predict your uh, future performance based on that job interview and try to mimic human judges in uh, assessing those job interviews. And so uh, this time, I guess the company still very much serves the job seekers, but now they are also aiming and targeting to serve job, uh, I guess in this case would be recruiters. And so uh, again, uh, if you have ever tried to hire someone for a job in this market, I've been several times on, we call it a hiring committee. So you get over a hundred applications in academia where a PhD is a requirement. Now imagine how many more applications companies, companies receive for jobs that do not require advanced degrees. I imagine in some cases it could be in thousands. And the reason for that could also be that not only it's easy to apply now because all the jobs are posted online and you apply online, but some people apply AI or, or automated services that apply for any and every job on your behalf. You don't even need to do it. And so the recruiters receive hundreds, if not thousands of applications and so not only you have to go through so many resumes, I mean, a huge number of applicants, but also sometimes you wanna conduct a job interview to be more precise, more valid in your assessment, but then you end up with hundreds, if not thousands of hours of interviews. And so you can record them automatically, pre-recorded questions, pre-recorded answers, but who's gonna watch it? And so here as that hire comes along and says, hey, our AI can watch all those thousands of hours of job interviews and help you select the correct ones. And so I guess that's how I understand the current business model. So Vladimir, I'm gonna move the microphone on to you and maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the current products, but I, I wouldn't mind if you sort of gave us like a two minute historic overview of where you come, you know, so basically, you know, how you came to this sort of product, because I know it's been an evolution and that's not what you envisioned from the very beginning when you started the company. First of all, thank you very much for the warm introduction. You covered the uh, many important points very succinctly. So that's a great intro already. I, I'm not sure if I can add much to it, but I will, I will try my best. Um, so hello everyone, thank you for being here. Um, I know it's Saturday, but uh, hopefully you're, this won't be a complete um, waste of your time. I think uh, we, 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 will we will have some interesting stuff to work on together. Uh, my name is Vlad. I'm a founder of Zen Hire, and as Vaz previously mentioned, we were pre we were previously Zen CV. And uh, to start from the beginning, when we were Zen CV three years ago, our story started with actually a personal story of my ex fiance Federica at the time. Uh, I was living in Milan four years ago, and I was uh, I was already working. I did a master's degree in management, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, and then later on we were. Um, we were, I, I was already working in the industry, so I has had, had some experiences with CVs and CV writing, but my girlfriend, she just graduated. She was fresh off college. She just wanted to find a job. So she took 
her CV and she applied to 50 positions and she got exactly zero replies. So she was desperate and she was crying on the couch. It was a bad, it was a emotionally a heavy moment for her. But luckily we were able to work on her CV together, apply some marketing 101 and sales 101. And basically we reworked her CV in a way so that we enhanced both the content and the design aspects of the CV. After which she sent it again to 30 job positions and she got seven replies three interviews and two job offers. The same person with a time frame of two weeks. So we understood there that CVs really can make the difference. And since lots of people had problems of making CVs, we started helping people firstly through word of mouth, friends, friends of friends, but later on the business started scaling and we had more than 200 clients. We, we were bu building a relatively successful business, but at the end, what we understood was that uh, so we, we had this platform where expert HRs and designers could work together with clients one-on-one -on -one directly and make highly personalized, high-quality CVs uh, to help them in their job search. But, but what, was, what was happening was that uh, one HR and one designer and one project manager from our team had to work with one client for two weeks to make $200. So we understood that from an economical standpoint, the whole thing wasn't really that scalable long-term which is why we decided to give up on that idea and pivot to more towards something else. So we were analyzing, okay, what, what kind of experiences do we have? What kind of knowledge did we acquire in these two, three years? Well, we understood a lot about CVs. We reversed engineered the ATS, which is the applicant tracking system, which is actually the, a tool that big companies use to filter CVs based on keywords that you have or don't have within a CV. So when a big company- One, like one clarifying question, if I may. Yeah. So when you say you were reverse engineering the system, so is it like a specific tool, a package software, I don't know, platform, or you mean like in general, how the system works, like the larger picture? It's a good question. So. I mean specifically to cover the initial hiring step, big companies use tools to scan thousands of CVs that they are receiving because it's a very tedious and time consuming job for a human to do. So they developed this software, but the software was developed 20 years ago and it's, and it's highly primitive in its functionality. Meaning that if you and I, we apply both for a business analyst role, for example, and you have the keyword business analyst four times in your CV and I have it three times, you're gonna get invited to the interview and I won't, yeah. which is a very, a very suboptimal way of filtering uh, humans who are, you know, much there. We are all a walking Bible of information and to judge someone on that one, uh, one A4 page of, of a CV is a mistake in the first place. And then judging by keywords within the CV is, is a horrible mistake in my opinion. So the system is broken. And Federica, even though she was a great person, she couldn't land an interview because the ATS was killing her chances. So what we did when we made her CV, we actually embedded a lot of good keywords, which is why she got the chance to land the interview in the first place, which is why she got two job offers at the end. So that's exactly what we want to recreate for people right now. We want to solve the problem of the ATS. I, we think that the system is deeply broken. So what we want to do is we want to build an AI that gives a fair opportunity to everyone to get interviewed and show who they are as a person and as a professional and based on those, you know, more objective, more rich data, we can actually filter people who uh, actually deserve, uh, you know, to to get the job or go into the following round of interviews. And one thing I hear from your uh, sort of uh, insight here is that if you are applying for a job, look at the job description carefully, figure out what kind of keywords they will be looking for, and try to put as many of those in your cover letter and your resume because they may still be using that older archaic system that will be scanning for keywords. So absurd, but I guess Absolutely. yeah, whatever works, right? And Exactly. And so one, one cool trick that you can do because we're still living this old broken system is when you build your CV, you can use any white space within your CV to add keywords <laughs> in, in non-visible fonts. No, <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So, so what, you need, what you're saying is that you can literally put a lot of words that are not visible to the human eye, but because it's Correct. still text white on white, the computer will read it. And so you will maximize Correct. your chances of being selected by the computer at yeah. least for the next stage. Exactly, that but still be beautiful to the human eye later I, on I don't know. When, once the we, HR takes a look at the scene. We talk so much about discrimination in the hiring process. Uh, so, you know, men, young, old, you know, racial differences. And here you're talking about something that is outrageous in my opinion. And yet it seems like it's, yeah. you know, fair game. 
Well, anyway, okay, well, yeah, sorry I, I interrupted you because the whole, I, you, I mean, I'm you, sure that- You're right, no, no, I agree 100%. Yeah, the I people, think the people who are watching us, I'm sure will be also applying for jobs. So, uh, and for me as an yeah. HR, essentially HR, well, I teach mostly international business, but my background is mainly in mm -hmm. HR. I just find the whole topic fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny topic. It's, it's yeah. funny how, how twisted and weird the system is yeah. currently. So okay. basically, we, we decided to pivot towards Zen Hire, which is sim said simply a, a simple eight artificial intelligence recruiter that will interview people just like a human does. Ultimately, the, the long term vision of, of course, it's a, it's a technologically uh, challenging endeavor, but we envision that within the next five to seven years, we will be able to build something that resembles the AI from the movie Her with Hawking Phoenix. I don't yeah. know if uh, some of you saw that movie. Basically, it's a hyper realistic video avatar that talks to you, is able to listen to your reply in a sentient way, and, and so on. So, Her applied to HR and interviewing is what we're building, basically. So the product that we're building right now is the long-term vision is to build an AI that's fully interactive, works in real time through a video conferencing tool, like just like Zoom. So like a digital digital human that's actually a robot and is able to interview millions of candidates in parallel, giving everyone a fair chance. But then some other stuff that we're building that is more, that's what, what I mentioned so far was is mostly long-term. So what we envision in the near term is, uh, we envision a platform through which basically um, companies can create a job a job board, a job post, candidates can apply. And when they apply, they can ap apply by submitting their video. And then our AI is able to analyze uh, subtle things in the, in the way in which you speak, in the, w in the way in which you, you, you know, you're, you're talking a voice, the logic behind the words that you're saying, facial expression, all those kind of things. And based on that, we can, uh, pretty accurately uh, infer some things about your character, about your personality, about your competencies, and based on that filter you into the next round or not. And the reason why we are Zen is because we deeply care about how people feel because uh, finding a new job is one of the most stressful things um, scientifically uh, compared to, you know, death of, uh, of, uh, of a loved one or not having enough money. Uh, they say one of the uh, one of the most stressful things um, is finding a job. So we aim to make that process less stressful by actually allowing people to first of all get like a guided meditation before the interview itself, so to calm their nerves, to, so they be their best professional self. And secondly, the, the biggest reason why people get stressed during their job search is because 97 percent of uh, companies don't give any kind of personalized feedback and then people can't use the opportunity to grow. So what we want to do is our AI, once we, once people apply for a job, we have a very strict and clearly defined set of criteria based on which we measure whether or not the candidates deserve to go into the following round. So if they don't go into the following round, we know exactly why, because X, Y, Z, D, dimensions were not as good enough. So we can tell to the candidate, look, you've been fantastic. You're in the top 15% of candidates. Unfortunately, we decided to move onwards with the top 10%. Here are the dimensions that you should be improving in the future in order to maximize your chances of getting a job. So things like communication, Excel, or whatever might be specific for their job. We give them that specific feedback and we give them also highly personalized content uh, and courses to improve in those dimensions. So we really so, help so let me, people yeah, to, let to, me clarify to grow this. This is that very, Yeah, this is very interesting, just making sure that we understand correctly. So you are still talking about the company as the client, right? But as a sort of responsible company, if they use your product, they will not only will be able to get a better selection, but they will also treat the applicants better and not only will explain to them why they didn't get the job, but they will provide some constructive feedback and even links to how they can improve their job. Did I understand that correctly? Or are you talking here about the clients, I mean, the job seekers being your clients as well? No, you understood correctly. So the B2B channel where we sell our software to businesses, are the clients of our that are our other businesses can give feedback to their applicants during the process of hiring. Yes, correct. This is, this is I somehow missed that part, but I think this is, not only fascinating as far as the technology goes, but I think it's very important from both company image point of view, you know, building long-term relationships, 
but also simply the ethics. Because again, I've seen, you know, luckily for me, I didn't have to apply for jobs for a long, long time now. But uh, my wife, for example, has been on the job market. Many of my students have been on the job market. And so the most frustrating thing that they share is that you apply for many jobs. Often you have many interviews and you never even hear back. You never even know if somebody looked at your application. And so it's like a black hole. And so you never know. Uh, so did I do something wrong? Did I, did, did I not click on submit button? Is there something inherently wrong with me? Or maybe the system that I'm mm. using is not even working. Mm. And so here you're talking about not only an acknowledgement, which again would be, I would even make it legally required because I mean, so, but, but, but some sort of constructive feedback, I think that actually may build some goodwill and uh, improve uh, improve the chances that maybe good candidates will apply for future job openings so the company may benefit long term. So this is interesting. So mm -hmm. for me, that's something I've never seen before. Thank you, Vaz. Yes, we we have interviewed a lot of companies and mo the feedback that we've collected was we don't want to give feedback because our candidates then use this feedback to judge our interview process and to complain how we were not right in our judgment. So that's the reason why most companies don't use feedback. But actually, what we what we believe is it's you know highly important to give feedback to people because then they can use it as an opportunity to grow. You increase brand image, as you indicated correctly, and also the way in which you give feedback. Uh, it can be uh, giving feedback can be done in such a way without hurting the other person's feelings. For example, you can say you were in the top 15% of candidates, but we decided to move onwards with the top 10%. The competition was tough. So it's not that you were bad, it's just that overall other candidates were better, but here here you can be even better in the future. Here are some courses, so um, hope that helps. Although here you raise an interesting issue, you're right, uh, at least in the United States, in, in this highly litigious society, Sometimes you really don't want to explain why you didn't hire someone because there are so many different uh, sort of protections uh, of, of sort of candidates of labor that, uh, you know, sometimes by revealing some information, you may open yourself up for some sort of a law lawsuit. But then again, we all know that, you know, obviously you cannot reject somebody's application because of gender or age or race. So obviously if you said, hey, I didn't hire you because you're a woman or because you are too old, too young, too whatever else, that, that wouldn't, you know, that would be illegal in fact. But if these are objective, constructive comments, like, you know, you don't have enough of this particular skill and we had candidates who had it. If you don't have maybe a, a specific job experience or uh, education level, or we didn't like the way you, for example, you talk to people and the job requires communication. In this case, it almost seems to me that it's not only more ethical and fair, but it potentially can reduce the chances of the lawsuit because here the candidate knows precisely why you know, or in which areas there were other stronger candidates. And so, yes, if somebody has better skills, better, you know, speaking abilities, better, whatever else is being tested. Yeah, how can I complain about it? They had someone stronger on objectively relevant to the job characteristics. So I think in this mm -hmm. case, it actually might be a positive thing rather than negative thing by revealing this extra information. Mm -hmm. So, Cool, yes, correct. So, so that's one part. That's the B2B channel where our, our clients are businesses that need to enhance their hiring process and they want to uh, help their applicants uh, grow through the inter by interacting with the company. So that's one line of business that we're trying to develop. And then the second line of business is the B2C, business to consumer, where we actually want to deploy the same technology um, that we're going to be giving businesses actually to help job seekers worldwide to improve their interviewing skills. So it's going to be a basic uh, website where candidates can come, they can choose a job position that they want to practice for, they can record a short 10 minute uh, interview, and then our team of HRs will provide very personalized feedback on how to improve to those candidates. It's going to cost somewhere around 15 bucks. It's not going to be that expensive, so it's going to be highly affordable. and uh, while the HRs are giving this personalized feedback in a very human way to applicants, the AI is looking at, at that interaction very closely and is trying to imitate the process long-term. So with more and more data, our AI becomes stronger and we can offer that service more and more autonomously. So we estimate that in a year or two from now, where the AI is uh, 
going to be able to give feedback to candidates in a fully automated way for some relatively simple stuff like how is your pronunciation, how is your fluency, how is your vocabulary, uh, charisma, uh, confidence, um, soft skills, stuff like that. So here you're talking about sort of some sort of a training tool now for the job seekers, right? Who might want to improve their ability to interview or Correct. basically uh, uh, interviewing skills. Uh, can, can you talk Correct. more a little bit about that? Because one of the things, if I remember correctly, you were going to offer essentially a free trial for the culture students where they can be interviewed and then receive feedback. Did I get that correctly? Can you clarify how exactly that would work? Because I'm sure it will be yes. of much, much interest to culture students. Who yes. Most of them are nearing graduation, undergraduate or master's program, and will be looking mm -hmm. for jobs, maybe already looking mm -hmm. at this time. So any help, mm -hmm. any sort of advantage they can get would be uh, obviously much appreciated. Absolutely, yes. So that was one of the, uh, th th that was, uh, there was one way in which we were trying to mix um, giving benefits to students while getting some practical data that we need uh, highly for AI training to make this uh, a good value exchange. So. One of the tasks that we built is called AI product development. You can see it in our brief. It's uh, relatively simple. Basically what we would need the students to do would be to try out our service. So basically just click on a link that's in the brief. The link will take them to a video conferencing uh, uh, interface that we've built. They're gonna be asked to activate their mic and their camera and they're gonna enter a simulated interview. There, there's gonna be 10 questions, one minute to answer each, each of the questions. They will record a one minute video for each of the questions. After they finish the 10th video, the whole thing will be, will be uploaded and we will then collect their data. What will happen later on is our team of HRs will take a close view into all of the videos. We will provide very specific scorings in the dimensions that we think are relevant for students of X culture. Uh, and the position we've built is a fake position, but it's uh, something that we also need within our team. So actually some of the students that do the, the interview well will be interviewed further to actually land a role potentially later at our company. Uh, but aside from that potential benefit of landing a role is all of the students are going to receive feedback on how they did in the interview later on. Obviously our capacities are not that big, so it might not happen immediately after the interview, but within a relatively short time frame, a couple of weeks, we should be able to get that feedback emailed to the students, um, to their email addresses. Yeah, so quite simple. Enter the link, record the interview, 10 minutes of work, we get the data, you get the feedback, good value exchange. Very interesting, and I encourage all of the students to take advantage of this opportunity, uh, even without feedback. Uh, you know, any practice, uh, uh, you know, in, in at interviewing, at talking is helpful. Uh, just like when mm -hmm. you take an exam at school, you always after the exam you think, man, if I could take it again now, I would definitely do so much better. Well, mm -hmm. here you kind of have that, you know, rehearsal, and so um, uh, rehearse as many times as you can with the hire, but also you know, ask your parents to interview you, ask your roommates to interview you. So the more you practice, the better you do at the real job. But here you'll actually also get the feedback. So it's not only practice, but it's practice mm. with feedback. All right, yeah. a few more questions what, if I, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. One thing that we can add, which you, you mentioned right now, uh, even if uh, you don't like our feedback, we can give you the link to the recording so that you can show, share it with your you know, professors or your peers or whoever you think is, could give you uh, even de more detailed feedback than our HRs. So, that's one other benefit that it's going to happen. Yeah, so um, I didn't realize we already spent half an hour talking and we don't have much time left. So I still have a lot of questions that sure. I can ask maybe, you know, sort of quickly. So one, industry and competition. Anyone does anything like this? Uh, are you unique in this respect or are there other companies building similar products? Yes, there are many competitors and it's a very crowded space, which is why we have three main pillars to our business model. Uh, one of the biggest competitors is HireVue. Uh, they can they can actually see within the brief we included a short competitor matrix so they can find the main comp competitors over there. But some of the biggest competitors are HireView, Spark Hire, uh, Vid, Cruder, uh, Wade and Wendy, uh, and basically any other startup that is trying to crack video interviewing with AI. So it's a it's a very huge it's a huge market 900 billion in the USA only because 60 million people per year uh, change jobs and the cost of hiring a new employee is 15K. 
So if you multiply those two numbers, that's 900 billion. So it's a huge market, which explains the, the huge number of competitors as well. But the ones that I just, I just mentioned are the biggest ones. And th that's why our approach, we want, to, we want to approach the market a little bit differently. Of course, we we're going to build, be building a product that's going to be able to hit the market and compete with all the other competitors. But at the same time, we would like, since we're, we see ourselves as a deep tech company, we want to focus highly on developing the underlying AI technology, not the application itself. We actually want to, uh, once, building, once we build this AI technology, we actually want to license it to our competitors. So we think as of all of our competitors as potential clients in the future. So there will be three revenue streams. First, we'll have the B2B application that will hit the market. The second will be the B2C uh, business to consumer interview, mock interview um, or interview preparation service. And the third one will be the deep tech licensing of our technology to our competitors. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. So the business model may be not uh, sort of not only B2B, but almost, almost a platform to other businesses that then serve other businesses. Like Correct. B2B, B2B, I guess. I'm not sure if there is such a thing, but uh, I guess that's almost like a... So so you provide the back end and you may not even be at the front end, uh, like your logo. Correct, and... correct. It's kind of like a white label solution. Yeah, where we just... So for example, there is this one competitor of ours and we're actually collaborating with our competitor because our competitor has half a million hours of interviews. So we will take their interviews, use it as the data that we will uh, train our AI on. And in return, we'll give them the algorithms that we train for free, basically, we won't mm -hmm. we won't sell it to them, but we will lease it lease it to them for free. So that's one kind of collaboration that could be could be very interesting for us. Very interesting. Um, I see several people are raising hands, uh, like Joseph here, Mustafa. So uh, I'll lower your hand just in case you press the button accidentally. But if you do want to ask a question, raise your hand. We will add you to to the chat. Or yeah, or uh, you can just put your question in the Q and A, and so this way we can also see your question. A few more questions for you, Vlad. So, so then, who who should the students be thinking about when they're trying to develop your sort of promotion campaign? So would would it be uh, sort of job seekers, companies that are trying to hire people, your competition? So who is the audience? Uh, whom the That's students a great need question. to keep in mind when they are working on your challenge. That's a great question. So within each of the tasks in the brief, it's specifically indicated what should be the focus group. So for the first task, strategic industry analysis, what students should be focusing on is understanding who is our, who is our competition, B2B. So that's the B2B part, other businesses. Uh, but then later on, for example, uh, when we were thinking about potential partnerships, or uh, you know, content creation or uh, testing out the product, we're always talking about the B2C mock interviews. So most of the tasks relate to the B2C, some of the tasks relate to the B2B and none of the tasks relate, relate to the deep tech. That's just something that's gonna be happening in the background on its own. So no, you don't have to think about that. It's, it's not that complex, it's fairly simple. Also, another question that I wanted to ask, so funding, are you already generating a revenue stream? Are you still in the uh, development stage when it comes to this AI supported video mm -hmm. conference, uh, video interviewing? And so what's the uh, um, ownership structure of the company? Uh, private investors uh, still at this time, just you? Uh, and I'm not sure how much information you, you can divulge here. So but... yes, so I, can sh I can share all of it. It's a good question. So we, we received two government grants. One was around 15K, another one was around 20, 25K. So that's around 40K dollars in total. We've basically financed our development in the last year of, with that money. We ran out of cash right now. So we're operating purely on equity. We have eight people in the team. Everyone is equity-based. The majority of the percentage ship around um, sixty percent is currently mine. Add the other forty percent is distributed among eight people. But that is going to change in the future once investors come in, new employees get hired. We're going to be making also an equity pool for future employees. So, which is also could also be interesting for students right now. Some of the students that might do the interviews, they will potentially land an internship role. And as startup grows very quickly, uh, within a year they might be progressing three to three to four times more fast. 
compared to standard industry and we are very generous with our equity packages too. So um, make sure to apply to Zen Hire because you might end up with an internship and maybe a piece of the company that's going to be worth uh, something something big in a couple hopefully of years. Hopefully unicorn level. <laughs> uh, so, but, well, uh, hopefully unicorn level. Yes. Yeah, so, but um, my related question then is, so um, conspicuously missing from your brief for the students is uh, help with attracting investors. And so I'm not sure, are you actively seeking investment at this time? From what I we hear are, yes. in some countries, investors at this time don't know where to invest. Apparently the stock market seems to be overheated. The housing market seems to start showing signs of cooling down. And so many investors are literally just looking for some starts up to invest in. And so I'm not sure how much students uh, you know, have contacts in that area, but if someone did know someone who might be interested in investing, is that something you'd be interested in at this time or you are- Absolutely. Absolutely. So if if you can actually uh, book, uh, if you can actually through your personal connection to someone you know, uh, book us an investor meeting, that would be a huge, huge plus also for your potential internship in Zenhar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's good to know. Now uh, let's talk specifically about the brief, uh, the um, uh, challenge uh, instructions that you provided to the students. Um, I'll just very briefly share my screen. Just sorry, to so sorry to interrupt. You asked me if we were if we are making revenue. Uh, we are still pre-revenue, oh, yes. so no revenue yet. However, we are working on two uh, very very good deals. If uh, the 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 amount of the so the size of each deal is more than 100k. So we might be closing some some deals with our competitors in the near future, which is also a, a good 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 thing because in the next cycle, the second cycle, we might even be uh, having paid opportunities for students or even some cash rewards for tasks. Oh, very interesting. Very interesting. How, how about your CV business? Are you still because that one you you did pay, you did have quite a few paying customers. Are you still offering yes, yes. that service, or you completely pivoted to the AI? Um, we completely pivoted. No, we are not offering that anymore. So you don't don't do that anymore, okay? Yeah, because I know that was some revenue stream. So, but um, I guess if all energy needs to be focused on the new mm. product, I guess that's what you got to do. Um, yes. So, um, looking at your challenge, I'll just briefly review it. But then the question will be: uh, So, what should students focus on? What's of most interest to you? And so, if they really want to impress you, either for that job entry, I mean, for that um, internship or a job in the future, but also just simply if they wanted to do a good job and you know spend their effort um, effectively mm -hmm. and efficiently. So, I see you asking about industry and competition analysis. And interestingly, unlike most companies, you provide quite a lot mm -hmm. information already. So it seems like you've done most mm -hmm. of the research for the students. Uh, then you ask for the market research, pricing, beta testers. So a bunch of uh, mm -hmm. requests of that kind. Then uh, you ask for some help with product development. And so the students can mm -hmm. be involved as uh, testers. And then you ask for uh, content creation. Uh, this one's interesting. So uh, again, students, if you will be doing business in the coming years, uh, going at the times when you just pay a TV stu uh, station and place your ads on TV, now you want to have um, a proper presence on the web. And uh, so uh, here content is the king. And so one interesting thing, what I really loved about Zen CV and now like about Zen Hire, that they give you an opportunity to try to create some content that could be used for this natural promotion. It's much harder than it looks. It's something you will definitely, definitely have to do for your own company. So it's an exercise that I all I encourage you all to try uh, and, and basically participate in. Because again, it's the good experience, the frustrations you will hear, you know, it seems like uh, it's a simple task, but once you start working on that, it's very frustrating. And so here I encourage you to kind of go through this experience so that you're better prepared when, when it's time to, you, to do it for yourself. I know we tried something similar for Xculture and I know it's hard, it's, it's definitely hard. So mm -hmm. I encourage you to, to try it. And so here you have some things like uh, keyword discovery and creation, again, something that you need to learn what that is and not only try to apply it, uh, copyright, uh, so articles and things like that, right? Uh, and yes, then... and the, the last the last task would be for the students to to promote our uh, mock interview service. Basically, mm -hmm. if you have a connection within your own university, universities are actually a very good playground for this kind of service because lots of students needs need to yeah. practice for interviews before they go into the market. So if you have any type of uh, potential connection within your faculty that would 
uh, that would like to make a partnership with Zen Hire on scale so that we provide these these services to the whole faculty as a, as a whole that would be of biggest value to us yeah, uh, yeah. But well, you asked me so you, you you asked me how much each task is worth from our point of perspective well so yeah so I, i'll ask you yeah so what exactly the students need to focus on if i may one more comment on this section of the report sure so one reason i also i'll be honest sometimes i'm a little what's the word um we argue back and forth with Vlad how specific the task should be. <laughs> and so I try to keep it general so that it's more universal. He tries to make it more specific. But to be honest, I actually really, really like the specificity of the task here. And I'll tell you why. Uh, again, in full disclosure, I hope nobody will take it um, um, you know, as an offense, you know, students. So most of the companies, when it comes to promotion, they just say, so how should we promote our company? You know, what would be the advertising strategy? And the truth is that most students provide very, very weak, useless almost answers. They say, oh, you should advertise on Facebook. Well, first of all, the company obviously thought about advertising on Facebook. So you recommend in Facebook as an advertisement vehicle. It's not new, not, not useful. I mean, they know it. Uh, even if you try to, you know, be more specific, like, you know, you provide some, okay, advertise on Facebook, it could be like a picture, it could be a video, again, not really useful, they probably thought about it 10,000 times, and unless it's some sort of a super creative idea, most of that goes directly into the recycling uh, bin. Uh, the problem also is that uh, it's not how advertisement works, you know, it's much more sophisticated, much more te technology mediated, much more sort of the system is much more complex. And so what I really like about Zen Hire that in their pursuit to give you more specific instructions, they expose you to how modern promotion works. They, by asking you to help, they also teach you that you need to come up through this keyword discovery process. You need to think about the keywords that need to be embedded in all that content. They tell you that you need to write uh, articles because that's how it works these days. And they have here, you know, longer articles, shorter articles. They have all these blog posts, summaries, visual, like that's what you would need to do. And so in this case, the task itself is almost like some sort of a manual on how to do it. So they could have done it just like everybody else. They could have said, okay, how should we advertise ourselves online? And then you would have come up with something shallow that, you know, they probably knew 10 years ago anyway. But so for you, it would have not been, it would have been an exercise, but you would have not learned much new other than maybe came up with some brilliant ideas. Here, they give you a structure of how to do it right. Will you come up with a nice, you know, will you create good content? That I don't know. But one thing you will learn is content needs to be created. And then, you know, there are different types of content. Oh, I never thought about that. Maybe we should also do like longer posts, shorter posts, visual posts. Uh, you know, you try, maybe it works for you, maybe, maybe it doesn't, but at least it teaches you how to do it right. And so even though it becomes very specific, very sort of, you know, technical, but I kind of like it because that's also more educational for you for students. So I guess, Vlad, I appreciate that you took it to such an extreme. But for the students, I also encourage you to take a closer look at this challenge because that's where you will get that guidance, which you will not in other challenges this semester. So, and then, yes, th there were a couple more questions. So entry modes and partnerships. So what would be the best way to be present in a new market? Uh, should we work with other uh, companies, universities, influencers? Again, gives you sort of a good idea of how this might work. And so Vlad, the question for you then is, uh, if students are planning to spend, uh, let's say three, four, five, ten 10 hours a week for the next several months. So what would be of most interest to you? So should they try to focus on finding those partners? Should they focus on maybe interviewing their friends to see how they make decisions, what, what company to work with when they're looking for jobs? Should they mm -hmm. reach out to their, I don't know, maybe parents or companies that they work you know, themselves for, go to HR and ask how they hire people? to better understand if they would be interested in hiring a company like yours. So what would be the most effective strategy here to spend those whatever hours they're planning to spend so that in the end it's useful stuff for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Thank you for asking that. So the most important task is absolutely task number three for us, which is currently to for students to do the interview themselves so that we collect the data. And then the second part of that task is something that's really interesting, I think also for students to learn. Uh, so when you're building AI technology, you need 
to have lots of samples of data. And when we say data, we mean input and output. So in this case, the input is the interview, is the raw interview file itself. And the output is the scoring or the, the label of the HR on how the interviewee performed. And then what, how AI works is you feed lots of these examples of input plus output, and then the machine learns to correlate the two. So what we would do, we would need student help to be an extended arm of our HR department to help us label those interviews. So by doing so, actually students will have to follow very specific how-to materials from our HRs on how to interview other people, which is even further gonna help them prepare for the interview itself. So task number three is of paramount importance for us in this cycle. And it's gonna carry uh, almost 45% of all the points of all the six tasks. So it's, it's three times more important than the other tasks. And then second after the task number three would be task number five, potential partnerships uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with universities and influencers. And then the third uh, task in terms of priority and importance would be task number two, which is uh, figuring out the perfect pricing model, collecting uh, data and intel from uh, from industry on you know what is the perfect price pricing, how much our services are actually needed, and so on. Mm -hmm. Very informative. Very good. There are a few questions here. So Sarah is asking: Is the product for the U.S. market, or is it available in all markets? Uh, basically, what's, what what geography do you speak? Hmm? English speaking markets. English speaking. So it doesn't have to be the United States. It's uh, the European Union, Canada, the US, Australia, uh, just about. Correct. Yeah. Although and at this time, but, but yes, but at this time it is limited to English, right? Correct. So, uh, and again, looking at global businesses, especially, it seems to me that it's essentially the whole world. Uh, I mean, obviously, Singapore, much of Asia, sure. uh, all of Europe, essentially, most of Africa, India, so all of them use English language, or at least at the, in the business world, they do. Um, Anthony is asking, does Zen Hire have frequent webinars for international students to learn from them or partake in an internship? Mm -hmm. So do you offer any sort of instructional seminars, webinars for the general public? So we have organized a, a sequence of webinars specifically for ex-culture students as part of the brief. So every Wednesday from 3 to 3.30 p.m. Budapest time, so Central European time, we are going to be holding uh, webinars for students to answer all the questions they might have about, around the brief. And whatever free time is left, we can use in any way in which you students seem fit to help you with your careers or whatever you, you might find inter interesting. By the way, that part again is, is unique. So most of the companies, most of the business owners, managers will work with, they are busy. And so they would have their company introduction webinar, sometimes another meeting later in the semester, but that's it. So here you have an access to the company founder every single week. So if you wanted to have this more sort of deep relationship uh, feedback on your ideas, questions, answers. Uh, I think that's the only company that offers this kind of engagement uh, this semester. I believe Differ Chat is also more open, but they have not every week, but they, they will have some, some regular meetings with the students as well. So, um, all right, well, so I think we've exhausted all of the questions. Everything's clear. We are almost on time, just two minutes over our 45 minute target. So thank you uh, so much, uh, Vlad, for meeting with us on the weekend. Uh, I bet you have better things welcome. to do, but um, thank you. And uh, so those, right. yeah, thank you those students who joined live. I see we have about, uh, what, about 20 people here. And then obviously we'll share that with the other several thousand who will watch it in the coming days in the recording. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice weekend. And Thank um, you, Vaz, for the beautiful introduction and the meaningful questions. Thank you, students, for being here. And make sure to choose Zen Hire. You won't regret it, I promise you. Yeah. Thank you. And Vlad, so uh, Ola, I know who is here, wanted to talk more about the research side. So uh, she's doing her PhD in information systems and big data mining, machine learning. But mm -hmm. I think that might be a little too boring for the students. Uh, so maybe we'll have a separate meeting and that's at some point. So it seems like they do have some interest in tools and theories in their program that you might find interesting. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is some research related collaboration. Beautiful. I would love to hear more. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, one more question, if I may, uh, not related again to the uh, uh, project itself, but do you guys, does your AI also work with text or at this time you're specifically looking at uh, video interviews only? 
uh, it works with text. So we look at the video and from the video, we extract the audio and then we, we do speech to text on the audio signal. So that we, we end up with a text file and then we do lots of uh, natural language processing on a text file as well. For example, our vocabulary detection algorithm relies heavily on text. So we look at actually uh, at different parameters like how, how sophisticated are the words that you're using, how rare are they, are you using filler words, are you using swear words, stuff like that. So that's, that gives me two important bits of information. One, I need to talk to you then also about research on the text side. Uh, Xculture has generated hundreds of thousands of pages uh, of text over the years that we mm -hmm. can sort of correlate with all kinds of performance indicators. And it would be interesting mm, to see. Interesting. So, Absolutely. you know, every, every week students tell us what's going on in their teams, how things are going, basically like weekly journals. And so we always wanted to know if those, uh, you know, if those weekly reports can be used. My administrative interest is, can we pred predict maybe problems in the team? You know, will the team have conflicts? Will they do a good job? Do the winning teams talk about things differently than the losing teams. And so both uh, to detect teams that may experience problems so that we can provide help, but also maybe even for training. So maybe language affects your team performance dynamics. So it's kind of big questions, but if we could crack it somehow, it's like a whole new direction of uh, research. So, but also yes, I, second, I, yeah. I think if we would have data on what were the top teams in all of the years uh, yeah. following mm -hmm. together with the scores in communication teamwork, nah, 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 together with the briefs, we could then do a really thorough data analysis and find indicators that correlate with being in the top 10% or something like that. But but also since there was a question about the geography, like one of the research projects we wanted to do based on this text analysis, we wanted to see if there is a difference in words in how people describe their experiences, for example, talk about things, uh, you know, men versus women, old versus young, but mm -hmm. also, you know, maybe mm -hmm. Asia versus Africa versus Europe. Mm -hmm. And so one mm -hmm. hypothesis is, or theory is that maybe there are differences in how people talk. And so some of those differences could be not a sort of qualification related. So it's not better suited for the job or less suited or indicative of some sort of competencies, but rather just simply cultural differences mm -hmm. or maybe some mm -hmm. sort of schemas. Maybe women are trained to talk more about relationship and men are trained to talk about the task. And so here, maybe mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. your AI could be sort of, you know, could take that into account because people from some cultures may be discounted because they don't, do not use the right words or use their own words. But that difference could be not, again, competency-based, but rather culturally-based. And so for me, obviously, the interest is more research. I mean, other such differences, if they sure. are what they are. But I'm thinking also, you know, to make your selection process more effective, maybe these things should be taken into account. But again, what gives me hope, again, I was a little afraid, to be honest, when you first said uh, interviews AI, I thought maybe it's going to only look at how the person speaks and basically, you know, people who have good acting skills all of a sudden mm -hmm. get an advantage because, you know, they speak clearly and they have proper mm -hmm. pace, proper intonation, proper pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And so, and not every job needs someone who can speak. So, you know, not every job needs an actor, but it sounds like you actually look at the content as well. So it's not only the form, but it's also the content. And so if so, then yeah, I guess uh, the accuracy should be very high. So uh, we just don't want to hire, you know, sort of nice psychopaths who can charm you by their speaking skills. And, and we know that, you know, in, in human judged interviews, we know that a person who looks pretty, you know, like good looking people who can talk, they always are scored as more, more competent than those who perhaps are not as good at verbal sort of communication and perhaps are Correct. not as nice looking. And so maybe AI mm -hmm. will actually give us hope to go beyond this sort of evolutionary tendency to favor those who look and talk nice, uh, but actually look for the actual objective skills that are needed for the job. So That, that, that is the long-term vision. Although in the first near term, a couple of years, we would like to focus mostly on sales because the parameters, the meta parameters of speech, like how you speak, pace, intonation, stuff like that are much more easier to measure compared to the logic yeah, yeah, because yeah. the logic is context dependent and then we would have to crack context by context by context which takes some time yeah but but don't settle for less i mean you're on a path here to I, change I won't, the I won't, world you know when you said 80 billion dollar industry so that's you know not only the hiring process but 900 ever, or 90 billion so not you know not only who gets hired you know the story doesn't end there the story starts there and so if the Correct. companies could get better people, then the whole business, you know, the, everything that happens in the decades after the person was hired, everything's affected. And so if your approach will allow us to make better hiring decisions, 
we are talking here about literally changing the world, you know, not figuratively, that literally. Increase the level of harmony in so, the world. Yeah, yeah that's, that's our mission. <laughs> don't settle for just, you know, looking for people for sales. You know, you, I think it's, you know, the, the long-term goals could be much, much more ambitious. Anyway, thank, thank you. you so much. Nice weekend, everyone. Uh, stay in thank touch. You. Uh, and uh, so, bye-bye. Um, Feel free to reach out about the data in NLP. Yeah.